Nam 2019, checking out all the cool new gear, but there is one thing that I'm very excited about, and it's not the gear. It's that they just announced MIDI 2. MIDI, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface, has been the standard for computers and synthesizers to speak music with one another since 1983, which is actually when it first debuted at Winter Nam here where we are, when a Juno synthesizer and a Prophet synthesizer first were able to speak to one another using that protocol. Roland brought over their JP6 and they plugged it into the Prophet 600 and it worked! banged on one keyboard and the other one played, and vice versa. In the decades since then, MIDI has been the unbroken standard, which is kind of crazy. It would be like having VHS tapes be the standard across the entire movie industry today. Because MIDI is used for computers to talk to things like synthesizers or samplers or drum machines. Basically anything and everything digital, MIDI controls. MIDI can also be used to control lighting and theatrical cues, which makes it very versatile as a protocol. It's super lightweight, and it's also super low latency. But more importantly, I think the reason why MIDI persists to this day is because it does such a good job of modeling the fundamental syntax of musical language. In other words, what notes we're playing, when we're playing them, and how we're playing them. So even if technology has changed a lot since the early 80s and styles of music have changed, the fundamentals of musical expression really haven't. So in this way, MIDI is kind of like sheet music. Sets of instructions that can be equally applied to hundreds of different styles of music. The language of which has remained largely unchanged for the past several centuries. So I have two questions then. One, what are they doing here with MIDI 2? And two, why MIDI 2? So what's happening today is the MIDI Manufacturers Association, or the MMA, is getting together with manufacturers to prototype the new MIDI 2.0 specifications. So prototyping means we've written the specification. Okay. It has not been tested yet. Gotcha. So before we adopt the specification internally, meaning everybody agrees it's correct, and certainly before we publish the specification so everybody else in the world can implement MIDI 2.0, we need to test it. Now, unlike when MIDI was first unveiled in 1983, this is going to be a closed-door session because the manufacturers don't quite know what specs they want to adopt yet. They actually don't even know really what features are going to make it into the final version. Some of the features likely to be included in MIDI 2.0 include things like web-based integration, backwards compatibility, which is very important, uh, 256 MIDI channels instead of just 16, and very interestingly, 32 bits of resolution. Now traditionally MIDI 1.0 has encoded 7 bits of information for things like velocity, how hard you're playing the instrument, or control change information, things which govern your performance. Now with MIDI 2.0 you're going to have 32 bits of resolution, so instead of 128 possible values for velocity you're going to have over 4 billion values. That's Four billion values for velocity. Why would you possibly need that many? I'm not really sure if there is that need. We've been getting by with seven bits of information, 128 values for velocity this entire time, and nobody's really complained. But that doesn't mean that it doesn't open up the possibilities for interesting things in the future. Maybe the extra resolution might be useful for something like augmented reality and virtual synthesis of sound in 360 degrees of binaural audio. I don't know, I'm just kind of spitballing here. Honestly, I think there's a degree of future-proofing at play here. I think the MMA wants to make sure that the technical spec is useful for generations to come, because although music doesn't change, technology does, and so the way that we might interact with music might change as well. It's also interesting to note that there were calls for MIDI to originally have 16 bits of resolution, but it was considered too technically impossible to achieve at the time. Well, it's got to be 16-bit parallel, megabyte, megabaud super duper this that throwing out numbers that just wouldn't have worked would have cost way too much because you know you got to put these things in every instrument you build so it can't cost too much now some of the features that i'm excited about include things like expanded implementation of multi-polyphonic expression which is a protocol used on some newer forms of expressive keyboard layouts that some companies have been experimenting with recently <laughs> 
but also in theory you'd be able to send individual pitch wheel information per MIDI notes, which is exciting for microtonal musicians because in theory, using nothing but MIDI itself, you can retune whatever instrument you're playing. So who knows, maybe using MIDI 2.0 will be in a new era of microtonal music. That's exciting. The web integration aspect of MIDI 2.0 might see more and more advanced browser-based virtual instruments. In, in other words, synthesizers that you can literally just load as a web page. And that stuff is cool, but ultimately, I really don't know what's gonna happen with any of this. MIDI 2.0 might be a complete dud, or it could be completely revolutionary. The fact that the industry hopefully is going to be adopting the full spec makes me cautiously optimistic about the whole thing. Because ultimately, all I want is just more interesting and innovative ways for us as musicians to interact with the technology that we have. And I'm hoping, at least, that MIDI 2.0 represents a step forward in that direction.